Hey guys, today we are going to look at completing the square and what that means. We're going to answer the question, what is completing the square? So I find it easiest to visualize this pattern with algebra tiles. So I'm going to be switching back and forth between this handout and where did it go? There we go. This algebra notes page or this algebra tiles app. Okay. So the first trinomial that we're gonna look at is x squared plus 4x plus c. So I want to figure out what value of c will complete the square. And when I say complete the square, I literally mean complete it. What numbers am I gonna have to put right there to make this a square? So let's look at the app right here. Here is what x squared plus 4x looks like. This blue is the x squared, and then these green tiles are x's, okay? So now I'm just going to keep adding one tiles until this square is completed. So there's one, two, three, and four, and now it is a perfect square. So I had to add four of the yellow one tiles to complete the square. So it looked like this. And before we try to figure out the pattern, we are going to do these other two, and then we will look at all of them and see if there is any pattern. So now we are going to look at x squared plus 6x and see what value completes the square there. Okay, so let me start a new diagram over here. There is one, two, three, and then, oops, I don't need that. Or I wanna turn it, there we go. Okay, so there is x squared plus six x with this one right here. And now I want to figure out what do I need to complete the square. So I'm just gonna keep adding these one tiles to complete the square. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when I had x squared plus six x, it took nine to complete the square. Last time I had x squared plus four x and it took four to complete the square. So let's record that on our handout. I had x squared plus six x plus c and it took nine to complete the square. And we can draw a picture of that. So there is what it looked like with the nine one tiles that it took to complete the square. Okay, now let's look at this next one, x squared plus eight x. How many is it going to take to complete the square this time? Okay, let's clear and let's start a new one. So this time I'm gonna have x squared plus eight x. So there's one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So there's x squared plus eight x. So now we are going to figure out how many tiles do I need to complete this square. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So when I had x squared plus 8x, it took 16 to complete that square. So let me draw that in. So there is the 16 that it took to complete the square this time. 
So now let's see if there is a pattern between B and C. So B is the number in front of X. So this time it was four. So B equaled four. And when B equaled four, I got that C was four. Okay, then on the next set, B was six. And C was nine. And on the next set, B was eight. And C was 16. So let's see if we can discover a pattern between B and C and maybe use the algebra tiles to help us. So the number that was B was the X tiles. So if you notice, I took my four X tiles and I split it in half. Then on this second one, I had six X tiles. And if you can see, I could split it in half again. I split it into two groups of three. And then the same thing happened here. When my B was eight, I put four on one side and four on the other. Then I created this square or this area. Look, I did two by two. So I split the four in half and I ended up doing two times two. And then that's how I got four. So I did four divided by two and then I got two and I multiplied it by itself. Okay, let's see if I did the same thing here. I split that six in half and I ended up doing three times three and that's how I got nine. So I did six divided by two and I got three and then I did three times three. And then this one, B was eight, so I split it in half and I got four. And then four times four was 16. So I did eight divided by two and I got four and did four times four. So that is the pattern to complete the square. We are going to take our B value, which was four, and then divide it by two, and then we will square it or multiply it by itself. Because four divided by two is two and two squared was four. Same thing is gonna happen here. We did B divided by two, which was six, and six divided by two is three, and three squared was nine. And then we did eight divided by two, which was four, and then four squared, or four times four was 16. Okay, so let's talk about why we would want to do this. Why would we want to complete this square? Remember, we're trying to solve quadratic equations. So let's see if completing this square, if finding that magic number, did anything with our new trinomial. Okay, so we did x squared plus 4x plus c, and we discovered that c was 4 to complete the square. So we want to factor x squared plus 4x plus 4. So I am going to figure out what multiplies to 4 and adds to 4, and that would be 2 and 2. So this factors into x plus 2 times x plus 2 or x plus 2 squared because it's the same factor times itself. Let's see if the same thing happens with this next trinomial. I found that c was 9, so the new trinomial is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. So I need to figure out what multiplies to 9 and adds to 6, and that would be 3 and 3. So this factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. All right, let's see if the same thing happens here. I had x squared plus 8x plus, I found that magic number was 16. So x squared plus 8x plus 16. I need to figure out what multiplies to 16 and adds to eight, that would be four and four. So this factors into x plus four times x plus four, or x plus four squared. So as you can see, once we completed the square and got that magic number, 
Whenever I factored it, it factored into a binomial square. So the pattern we observed was splitting B in half and then squaring it. And whenever we used this, we created a perfect square trinomial because it factored into a binomial squared. And if you remember in our last lesson, we learned how to solve binomial squared when it's set equal to something. Now we can take the square root of both sides. So that is why we would want to do this to create that binomial squared because then we can solve the equation using the square roots method. For now, let's just practice creating those perfect square trinomials by using this pattern right here, b over two squared. So on number one, it wants us to find the value of c to make this a perfect square. So c is b over two squared. So c is 26 over two squared. So C is 13 squared, which is 169. So I found the value of C to make it a perfect square. It is 169. So this is gonna be X squared plus 26 X plus 169. And now we are going to factor this so I need to figure out what multiplies to 169 and adds to 26. That would be 13 and 13. So that will factor in to x plus 13 times x plus 13 or x plus 13 squared. Okay, let's do the same thing with number two. I just need to be careful because this time my B is negative, but we're still gonna use the same pattern. We are going to do B divided by two squared to determine the value of C. So it'll be negative 24 for B divided by two squared. So C equals negative 12 over two, or negative 12, and then we're gonna square it, and negative 12 times negative 12 is 144. So we found C, it's 144. So this will turn into the perfect square trinomial, x squared minus 24x plus 144. And now I'm going to factor this, I'm going to figure out what multiplies to 144 and adds to negative 24, which would be negative 12 and negative 12. So that factors into x minus 12 times x minus 12 or x minus 12 squared. Okay, let's look at the last one. I want to find the value of c that will make this a perfect square. So I am going to do b over 2 and then square it. So it'll be five divided by two squared. So C equals 25 over four. Okay, now whenever I write this, I'm gonna get X squared plus five X plus 25 over four, which is gonna be hard to factor with the X method since I have a fraction here. Um, so let's see if we notice any patterns. I see it. Whenever I did the B over 2, negative 12, that ended up being the number in my binomial. Same thing happened here. When I did B over 2, that ended up being the number in my binomial. So instead of going through the X, I'm just going to follow that pattern. And I know that this will factor into X plus B over 2, which was 5 over 2 and then squared. 